This is Internet Marketing. to you by Site Visibility at sitevisibility.co.uk. This is Internet Marketing. Now, before we start today, we'd like to encourage anyone looking for help with their digital marketing to get in touch with Site Visibility. Whether you have a burning digital marketing question or you're looking for an agency to work with, they'd love to hear from you. Give them a call. The number being plus four four one two seven three seven three three four three three, Or you can fill out the form on the website or you can use their funky live chat function on the site and you'll end up speaking to either Scott or Sean. They'd be more than happy to help. Now today I'm joined by Justin Christensen, author, co-founder and president at Conversion Fanatics. Justin, how are you? Hey, pretty good. Thanks for having me on the show. It's a pleasure and uh, thanks for coming on. Now you're down in sunny Texas, aren't you? I am down in Austin, Texas. Now, for all of us listeners that live in cold climates, just tell us what the weather's doing right now in Texas. Um, Right now, the sun is shining super bright here at 9 a.m. when we're recording this, and it is going to be about 95 degrees uh, today. Uh, So typical summer in Texas. And just for our listeners, that's 95 Fahrenheit, not centigrade. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not centigrade for sure. Yeah, it's pretty warm here, actually. I'm, I'm recording from Dover today, Dover in the UK, down in the bottom corner of the UK, and it's sunny and warm. So I'm enjoying it as well. So, um, Justin, why do you start off telling us about your yourself and what you do at Conversion Fanatics? Um, yeah, so I'm a father, husband, uh, been in the digital marketing space for, I think this is year 17, I think. Um, I started full time in 2005. Um, sold a company back in 2009 and based on some information that I'd published there, I got asked about implementation and optimization and, uh, started a private consultancy and then quickly kind of partnered up with a longtime friend of mine who had built out a team or a small team and had some systems and processes in place to start conversion fanatics. Uh, what is now conversion fanatics about five plus years ago. Um, since then we've worked with over 150 companies and helped them add about over, I think over a hundred million dollars in additional revenue, doing strategic conversion rate optimization and split testing for them and really just helping them make their marketing more effective uh, Mm -hmm. and help them with sustainable growth uh, in that aspect. And I read somewhere, I'm I'm probably gonna misquote this, but I read somewhere that you have been split testing since, was it before the internet? It wasn't before computers, was (laughs) it? You're not that old, are you? (laughs) No, I'm not that old. Um, No, I've been split testing before there was software to split test, Um, you know, so doing it the crude way. Yeah. You know, modern kind of softwares that we rely on now for split testing have only been around really since probably, you know, the last nine, 10 years. Now, I will, I'll come back to split testing because I want to talk, talk about that a bit later. Um, wouldn't mind starting off just talking generally because this whole conversation today is around sort of, you know, optimizing conversion rate, but also about optimizing user experience. And user experience, in my mind, is a huge, huge area. What's your feeling on how user experience sort of fits in with, you know, optimizing conversion rates and the whole experience around e-commerce what's your sort of feeling about it yeah so i mean obviously that is a massive topic but you know user experience in and of itself people immediately go to oh i just need to raise or raise my conversion rate and that isn't as effective anymore because you can raise your conversion rate and make less money um, you know, because average order values and other, you know, metrics will change and adjust as you move along. So what we do instead is we look at the user experience or the engagement of those visitors. So what is that path of least resistance to where we want those visitors to go or the actions that we want them to take? And how can we remove friction in that process to get them from point A to point B faster? And when you're looking at it from a user user experience standpoint, if you optimize for that engagement and optimize for the likes and dislikes and the friction points that your visitors are having on the site, your other metrics are going to be impacted by it, such as raising your conversion rate, um, improving your revenue per visitor, improving your lifetime value, but some other things that 
people when they're optimizing don't pay attention to or don't take into consideration is the other things that it has an impact on, such as better, happier customers when they come in. Maybe the frequency at which they purchase is higher or it's reducing customer uh, support inquiries because you're better engaging with those visitors and you're giving them a better message mm-hmm. and you're answering those questions up front. And by creating that better experience, you're in turn improving everything, not just focusing solely on, you know, did that button color raise my conversion rate? You must have had loads of experience in looking at sort of, you know, the websites of huge corporations and I suppose smaller companies as well. What would you say is the the, the biggest couple of major goofs that you see people make in terms of, you know, sort of depleting user experience on their sites? Um, the biggest thing is they just try, I mean, this particularly in a lot of smaller companies, you know, I'm talking, you know, the million plus range, not the massive corporations, but is they use so many gimmicks and tricks to try to get their visitors through to the next step and they overcomplicate it. Um, You know, the simpler generally is the better option. And I get asked all the time, you know, what about this and what about that? And, you know, this plugin and this app and this theme and this, you know, site looks great. It must be converting well. And they use this trick and people just overcomplicate it and try to make it really gimmicky and try to build false social proof and try to leverage and bring in all of these elements such as trap trust and, Mm. um, you know, all of those things into the fold and they fail to really just identify what really their visitors care about the most. Yeah. You know, cause what you or I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, I could test the same thing 20 times for people and I'm going to get, you know, it might win 15 times, but it's still going to lose five. Mm. Um, it's the law of averages. It doesn't always work like that. So what worked for one doesn't always work for the other. And I see a lot of people modeling instead of testing and working for what specifically works for their particular company and their particular product and their their other hard good costs and their, you know, other elements of their business that aren't 100 percent apples to apples comparison mm. to say another company out there. But um, with that Another element is they just don't shout. They're shouting how great their product is Mm. instead of leading it from what's in it for me as a consumer. So leading with benefits is probably the biggest issue that I see across the board on all of the sites that we review. You mentioned trust there, which is a a huge thing. Do you think it's getting harder as the years go by to, to sort of garner trust on the Internet? Um, I think it's, yeah, it's getting a lot harder because I jokingly say that marketers ruin everything. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, because there is, there's a lot of junk out there. There's a lot of noise. And even in the e space where it's getting tougher and tougher, we, we you know, obviously we're competing with the Amazon, the Amazon beast. And, you know, it's harder and harder to garner that trust off of Amazon and on your own thing. So a lot of brand branding and storytelling and building up that credibility there is more and more crucial today. You can't just get by on a, you know, a blank about us page and, you know, a few testimonials. So you need real live reviews. You need honest kind of community behind it. And I've, I'm seeing a lot of cool companies doing a lot of cool things, kind of building that community mm-hmm. and building that kind of circle around their products and it's really driving, um, you know, their revenue and their scalability because they're creating kind of that sense of involvement and are open and available to, you know, their, their customers or their potential customers. Mm. You mentioned split testing there. We have to talk about split testing. You, you wrote a very nice um, post about that, and I think it was entitled something like, is it worth split tasting or tasting or even testing? That would be good, wouldn't it? If you could taste the <laughs> websites. Um, we go. One of the things that really stuck in my mind that you mentioned in that post actually was that a lot of companies, including really big companies, just do not do split testing. I well, that's amazing. Why is that, do you think? I mean, there's an art and a science to it. Um, and it's generally because I kind of think that 
they get so close to their product and they they get so close to their marketing and it's working. You know, at companies of certain sizes, you know, a million, two million, five million, you know, we, we even work up into multi-billion dollar companies. You know, it's working. It's converting. So mm. why should I mess with it? And I think it gets put down the priority list. Yeah. They kind of know in the back of their mind that they need to be improving things. And maybe they're doing some cohort type you know, changes on the thing. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll just change this and we'll see what happens. Um, but where the magic happens in, in, again, fires come before kind of the, the importance of it. But where the magic happens is when they actually embrace that process of true optimization and see kind of the benefits long term because it takes time. It takes patience. It's, it's hard work. Mm. So people just kind of go the easy route, I guess, is probably my, my short answer uh, to that. But once they embrace it and truly understand that, oh, you mean I can test these two things and I'll know specifically if my visitors like it or not, and it might raise my conversion rate, it might not, or it improves this metric or proves that. When they embrace the fact that you're learning more about what your visitors actually like and dislike and help you understand their behaviors more so, um, and you look at it, the long-term vision from that perspective is that's where the magic happens. And then A-B testing is really just the vehicle that we use to prove or disprove any assumptions that we might have or really going out and answering the question why. So why is that certain thing happening or why do we use that certain color or why do we look at that uh, that layout or whatever that question is? We always ask ourselves why and then we just prove or disprove why we think that is using the A-B testing. You mentioned colors there, and I I have to come on to a, one of my most geeky, interesting uh, psychological topics, which is uh-huh. button colors. <laughs> you mentioned about yes. colors on websites, and I know that you've written about, about this, and one thing that um, I hadn't really thought about is that you mentioned the, 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 the best button or the best color for a button depends on the context of what the button is in. Tell us just a bit about that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the cliche in split testing is, Hey, we're just going to split test our button colors. Yeah. And if you have a reason behind it, meaning that you're not just, Oh, somebody said that an orange button works better than a green button. You, you get the reason why. And, I generally look at it that you should subconsciously be telling your visitors where to click next in the journey from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So if your main call to action on your homepage is an orange button, the next step in that process when they're shopping on your e-commerce store should be an orange button. Your continue to checkout should be an orange button. Um, Your checkout button should be an orange button. Uh, and it's that consistency in that that's going to help your visitors move down that path. But if every button on your site is orange, it leads to confusion on specifically where you want them to go. So we want to add enough contrast to the main calls to action that it's visible and that they know specifically and subconsciously where to click on next. And the, co- the actual color of that really depends on, you know, a hundred different factors. Um, It really depends on the color scheme of your site. It depends on, you know, what brand equity you have, um, what guidelines you have for your brand and how much you, how much pain you want to endure by going really off the mark and, and doing something different. But then you also have to play in the role of, you know, ADA accessibility. Yeah. um, And all of those things that, You know, I see a lot of people using green buttons and green nine times out of 10 is not accessible. Um, And it's just generally blends in with the rest. So adding some contrast, adding some, you know, true path down, you know, we use the term funnel in marketing a lot. And you can do that using colors and your main calls to action and placement of those. Um, So there is a ton of psychology that goes behind it. But don't just go out and split test it just for the sake of split testing a button color. Mm. Um, you're just throwing darts at a dartboard at that point. Um, use it and answer the question why. So I'm going to add contrast and it's going to make the call to action more visible and it's going to help the visitors, you know, down to the next step. Um, you think about it a little bit differently rather than just, you know, an orange button works better than a green one. 
it's really interesting actually that you mentioned that green buttons aren't really good for accessibility because accessibility or a 11 y as the skeeks call it because we we take the a and we take the y and we, we say that there are 11 letters in between it's quicker to say uh, it's a yeah. huge area we must talk about that one day but um probably sadly we haven't got time um Barely scratched the surface of this whole area, but if you had one sort of top tip or a key takeaway for our audience today, uh, what would it be, Justin? Listen to your visitors. So ask the hard questions, get that feedback, pay attention to your data and use it to um, answer those hard questions. And that question is why? And then just always be split testing. Never let a campaign go by that you are not testing something to improve it. Um, you're going to get there a lot faster and you're going to see a lot more explosive growth and everything is going to be more effective and more fun. Um, and you're going to be a lot smarter marketer uh, if you're doing that. Well, Justin, thanks so much for coming on. Um, how can our listeners find out more about you and more about Conversion Fanatics? Uh, yeah, you can just go to conversionfanatics.com. Uh, that's plural. And then you can find out my contact information on all my social channels by going to Clixo, C-L-Y-X-O dot com slash Justin Christensen. And it's kind of my virtual business card and has links to all my social channels and my contact info. Thanks, Justin. And thanks for listening, everyone. The show notes will be in the usual place, sitevisibility.co.uk slash podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please leave us a review. That would be great. Questions and suggestions or even guest suggestions, send those to podcast at sitevisibility.co.uk. You can tweet at sitevisibility. Remember, we have a site visibility group on LinkedIn. So that's all from me, Andy. And it's all from Justin. Hey, thanks for having me, Andy. Thanks for coming on, Justin. And we'll see you next time on Internet Marketing.